a lot of what I read and talk about on this channel is not exactly mainstream. And, you know, that's by design because part of the reason I started this channel is because I didn't really have people to talk about the stuff I read with. You know, I read and talk about a lot of fantasy and science fiction and also just weird stuff that I find, you know, romance novels by Saddam Hussein or bizarre fan fictions, you know, things like that. Like, that's what I read because I enjoy it and that's what I talk about because I enjoy it. And so, <clears throat> once in a while, it's nice to get a feel for what other people read, you know, like more normal people who don't do this as like a major hobby or at least just aren't interested in the same genres I am. Partially to get out of my comfort zone and partially just to see what the n normal cultural zeitgeist is into these days. And The Maid is one of these books and it's not good. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. The Maid is what I'm going to refer to as something your mom's book club would read. And I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way, so I apologize if it comes across that way, <clears throat> but I mean it in the sense of like, okay, this definitely isn't any sort of fantasy or sci-fi. It's It doesn't really have super deep lore. It's not even all that complicated, really, but it does have some appeal to it. It's about a normal person who's solving a murder case while also dealing with their personal demons. You know, you can probably think of a lot of other uh, books that fall into this category. The first one that comes to mind that also got really big was The Girl on the Train. Now, The Girl on the Train, while I wasn't a huge fan of it, I can at least see the appeal of it, and I can see why it would get so much bigger than something like, say, The Stormlight Archive, because The Stormlight Archive is really big among fantasy fans and really popular among fantasy fans, but among regular people it's not that well known and they probably wouldn't be that into it for various reasons. <clears throat> and The Maid, it got somewhat popular when it came out at the beginning of this year, and it seemingly got some decent reviews and it sold a lot, and I'll be honest, I don't know why. I don't see what the appeal is here. Like, it, it follows Molly, uh, Molly Gray, who works as a maid at a super fancy hotel, and one day she finds the dead body of a patron in his room. And this guy is named Mr. Black, Molly already knew him somewhat well, and he was very wealthy, and so it's just, oh, okay, he died, what happened here, and that is the rest of the book. Now, given that this is a murder mystery, you would expect it to be about, you know, the main character trying to solve the mystery, you know, going around investigating, talking to people, picking up clues, putting all the pieces together, you know, that's what good murder mysteries are supposed to do, at least. And this one has the same problem that a lot of other murder mysteries seem to have nowadays, which is that it focuses on everything but the investigation. You know, it's mostly just focused on the character's personal lives and personal drama, and the murder is just what brings that out. I made fun of some terrible murder mystery not that long ago called uh, 14 Ways to Die, which had a similar problem. You know, it was allegedly about catching this serial killer, but it was really just focusing on the main character's life, which wasn't, frankly, that interesting and go her going around doing other stuff, and then oh, at the end, like, oh, okay, I guess that's the killer. We just we just find it out. There's not an actual mystery uh, with clues where the audience can try putting it together, and there's not really much for the characters to do, frankly, so it just wound up being a boring book. And a couple years ago, I also read One of Us is Lying, which had a very, very similar problem. And at first I was thinking, okay, those are both young adults, so that might be why. That might just be a problem within that subgenre there, like young adult murder mysteries. If that, that sounds like a very small subgenre now that I'm saying it out loud, but whatever. But The Maid is made for adults, so I guess this is just something that happens nowadays. Like after the opening sequence where we're briefly introduced to Molly and then she finds Mr. Black's dead body, we just spend like a quarter to a third of the book on flashbacks about her life, explaining her life up to this point. And frankly, it's not that interesting. Like, her mother abandoned her when she was young, so she was raised by her grandmother, and her mother died a long time ago, but that didn't bother her much because she didn't know her, and then more recently her grandmother also died, and she likes her job as a maid, but it doesn't pay enough, so she's having money troubles, and she also doesn't like her boss very much, like the head maid uh, named Cheryl at their hotel, and that's kind of it. You know, there's really nothing else there. She doesn't even really get into much uh, trouble or anything regarding the investigation until the latter half of the book, which 
Things did pick up a little bit there for a little while, I admit, but it quickly went back down into the realm of mediocrity. Now, learning all these details about Molly's life and about what led her to this point might have been fine if it actually gave us any details about the crime, but we, we get nothing. Like, we learn about her relationship with Mr. Black and how he just wasn't a very nice person, which, okay, I guess that gives some motivation for why some people might want him dead, but it just... that's it. You know, that's all we get, and you could have done that in so much less time, so it just... it doesn't work on any level. Like, the end of the book, um, or rather the last chunk of the book, is at a courtroom trial where uh, the murder suspect is being put on the stand and uh, they're try the judge and jury and everything are trying to charge him with the crime, and Molly is, you know, giving testimony there. And that's when I realized, okay, this would have been a lot better had this been the start of the book and the entire thing was just flashbacks based on characters' testimonies, or even just Molly's testimony. Because think about it, if that's what this book was, then the audience, the judge, and the jury could all have been slowly putting the pieces together ourselves until eventually it comes to light that, okay, yes, this is who killed Mr. Black, and th this is why this person should be found guilty or should be acquitted. You know, like, it, you could do a lot with that, because, well, it, it would be at least a little bit different. You don't necessarily need to go crazy and different with murder mysteries, but at the very least, it would have been a neat way to go about it. You know, it would still be the characters investigating and the audience and the characters finding clues and putting them together till we find out who the killer was. Which is the whole appeal of murder mystery. At least I thought that's what it was supposed to be. And, uh, yeah, instead, Molly doesn't even really investigate, like I said. She just kind of wanders around, occasionally gets into some mild trouble, and gets all the answers handed to her. Which is the same problem that I had with, again, 14 Ways to Die, and uh, One of Us is Lying. So, it's just... I don't know, man. It, it just fails on a very basic level. Some of this may have been fine had Molly been a more interesting character, but she just isn't. You know, like I said, her backstory's not that great, and she's not a good investigator, quite frankly. Like, I believe she's supposed to be autistic. Like, the book doesn't ever come right out and say it, but she acts stereotypically autistic. Like, she doesn't really understand how social niceties are supposed to work, and she regularly misses the point of things, but quite frankly, her regularly missing the point of things doesn't make her come across as autistic, it makes her come across as very, very stupid. Like, there is a point where some characters are in a hotel room, and they're very clearly up to something nefarious, and they kind of panic when she walks in and sees them, and she sees a bunch of white powder on the table, and obviously it's cocaine, but she says, well, who's eating powdered donuts here without a plate? And she just wipes it up. And, like, is this an edgy Amelia Bedelia reboot? Because that's, that's what this feels like. It feels like an edgy Amelia Bedelia reboot, where instead of just missing the point of her employer's instructions, she is an idiot who winds up uh, coming into drug deals and coming across murder investigations. If you never read Amelia Bedelia, it's a children's book series about a maid who, uh, like I said, she just misses her employer's instructions a lot. Like, there will be instructions that say, draw the drapes, and that means close the curtains in the living room. But she just says, okay, draw the drapes, so she'll draw a sketch of the drapes or something. You know, it's a, she's missing the point of things, and maybe she's also autistic, I don't know. But this just feels like a dark and edgy reboot of that. It's really stupid. So yeah, this book isn't good. Uh... Quite frankly, I don't have much else to add. I know this was a relatively short review. Like, I'll have a brief spoiler section at the end, because obviously the reveal of who the killer is is also very unsatisfying. This is just not a good book. But it's also just so basic that there's nothing else to really add. Like, Molly's not an interesting character, and we spend the whole book with her. It's all from her perspective. We hear about how she likes the Olive Garden, and we hear about her love life and how that she doesn't have much luck there. But, like, as a murder mystery, it's just not that good. As a drama, it's not that good. So... I, I just don't have much else to say, and um, if you want to know who the killer is, um, I guess we'll do a spoiler section now. If you want something to happen, you just need to pray, and not be a Muslim, or Jewish. Okay, so who killed Mr. Black? It was his ex-wife, because he was just, he wasn't very nice, he left her for a much younger woman, uh, but he mistreated her as well, it's just, it's a whole thing. She didn't like him much, so he killed her. But the thing is, at the beginning of the book, when Molly uh, walks in and sees his dead body, she faints, right? 
And after she wakes up, she actually sees Mrs. Black there, or the former Mrs. Black, whatever, and she, they have a conversation and Molly agrees to help her cover up her crime, but we don't see this. We, the audience, do not see this until the very end after the court trial, after uh, someone else has already gone to prison for the crime. Now, the guy who went there was already a scumbag, so we don't really feel bad for him, but still, you could probably at least focus a little bit on how he's serving time for a crime he didn't commit. And quite frankly, I'm more upset that we see everything from Molly's perspective, right? We see the entire book from her perspective. It's first person. And the author cheated by not showing us this. Like, th the character knew, and she just never uh, thought about it in her narration, saying, okay, Mrs. Black killed him. They, that, that's what happened. Yep. Like, that's so stupid. That is so cheap. And it just makes the whole thing feel sterile and dumb. And I'll be honest, I think this last minute twist could have been good had, again, this whole book been focused on the courtroom trial. Like, it could slowly p put the pieces together, and then at the end we realize, okay, yes, he, he is the one who killed Mr. Black, let's put him away. And then at the end we get that reveal where Molly's like, oh, actually, thinking, oh, actually, it was Mrs. Black. And then we realize, oh, okay, so not everything she said was true, and this was, like, them trying to alter the story a little bit to save Mrs. Black from going to prison because she was kind of justified in what she did. Okay, like, that would have been an interesting twist, but, like, they didn't do that. Like, it's weird. Like, again, this is a book for normies, so I'm not asking it to be super weird or super experimental or anything like that, but just still, you had an opportunity to do at least something with it there. Like, if that's how it turned out, and it was actually a good twist at the end, then I might have set, looked back at this book a little bit more fondly, and I don't know if I would necessarily recommend it or anything, but I would have thought it was better than this. This this just feels very clumsy. I, I don't have a better word for it, but it like I said, this twist feels extremely sterile, extremely clumsy, and extremely dumb, and this whole book is boring, quite frankly. That's the biggest crime it commits. It is boring. It is lacking in any sort of tension. Like, we don't want to know the answer to the mystery of who killed Mr. Black, and I don't know, it's not even, like, offensively bad or anything like that. It is just boring and bad, and I don't like it. So, don't read The Maid, please. Goodbye. Special, special, special thanks to everyone who watched, including all the patrons whose names are here, and the $10, and up of above the ten dollar patrons are uh, Apo Savalanen, Olivia Ray, and Brother Santodes, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Evie, Flax, Great Grebo, Carcat Kitsune, L. Lindbergh, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Matthew Baudreau, Microphone, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, They Victus, and Wesley. Thanks to all of them. I couldn't do it without them. Well, maybe I could, but it would it would be much less fun, much worse to, to do. Uh, and thanks to everyone who watched. If you want your name on here, consider donating. If you don't feel like doing that, then, you know, just rate the video, comment, subscribe, share it around, uh, annoy all your friends with the spam. Uh, goodbye.